Welcome back to the Big Tire Garage and our differential rebuilding series. This video is specific for a Jeep JK front axle Dana 44 Rubicon edition and in particular the housing upgrade version of that front axle from Dynatrack. Now this video will take you step by step through the process of correctly installing a locker and a new set of gears in the front axle in your Jeep JK. We'll cover gear ratio options, locker options, other upgrades that you can do to the axle, the tools that you're going to need to actually perform the work, some tools that make the job a lot easier to do, and a few workarounds to help you out if you don't have access to those special tools. Now, like any differential rebuild, it all starts with the simple question. Are you changing the gear ratio? And let's face it, if this is a Jeep axle, you probably are. So you need to calculate the new gear ratio that you're going to need underneath your rig. Now, there's lots of videos out there explaining how to calculate that gear ratio, but that is the first step. And once you've decided what gear ratio you're going to use, well, then you're ready to start rebuilding. In 2007, when Jeep completely redesigned the Wrangler and came out with the JK model, the axles underneath it, they completely changed. They were called the Next Generation Dana 44. Now on the Rubicon edition of that Wrangler, you could get the Dana 44 front axle. Now the Rubicons came with 410 gears and factory electric lockers. Now, as the JK gained popularity and more and more people were swapping on bigger tires, aftermarket companies stepped in and started to offer complete bolt-in heavy-duty one-ton axle assemblies. That meant that those 44s that were coming out from underneath those Jeeps, well, they were going up for sale. And they became a very popular swap for either JK owners who wanted to turn their Sahara or X into a Rubicon or for previous model Jeep owners who were looking to upgrade the axle. The next generation Dana 44 was different than previous generation Dana 44s. The ring gear was physically thicker and the pinion had more heft to it. The pinion bearings were larger and the machine surface where the bearing sat on the pinion was a lot thicker. The spline count was different where the yoke attached as well and the pinion was physically shorter. The JK Dana 44 is a great upgrade for any Jeep and the aftermarket has even stepped in there as well and they offer complete axle truss swap kits to get those JKs underneath your LJ or your TJ. One item that needs to be addressed on the next generation Dana 44 front axle is the housing. From the factory, the tubes are a little thin, the inner C's are a little light, and the knuckles have some inherent weak links built into them if you plan to run large tires and abuse the front axle off-road. A great option there is to just swap in a complete aftermarket front axle housing replacement, and that is what we're doing today. This is a Dynatrack axle housing with reed knuckles at either end. For the internals on our axle, we've got a 513 ring and pinion from Yukon gear and axle, a Yukon zip locker master install kit that includes all the bearings and shims that we're going to need to build the axle, and an upgrade that I've chosen for this one is a 1350 U-joint because I plan to upgrade the drive shafts later on down the road. 
First thing we want to do is install our inner axle seals and using an inner axle seal installation tool makes that a lot easier. I like to put a little bit of RTV around the outside of the seal just to make sure that it's good and sealed. Then we can drive the bearing races into the axle housing. I'm using an actual bearing race installation tool. If you don't have this tool, you can put the races in using a punch and a hammer if you are incredibly careful. Next step is to make a setup bearing. You do this by simply buying a matching pinion bearing to the uh, original bearing and grind out the inside using a die grinder until it fits over the pinion head without needing a press. Then we gotta take a measurement. We're gonna measure the size of the pinion head before dropping on our pinion bearing and dropping the pinion into the housing. We'll put the target plate on top of the pinion head from our pinion depth checking tool. And then we'll assemble the pinion depth checking tool following the instructions. You have to set the depth of the dial indicator in the tool using the holder for whichever size pointer you plan to use. Then the pucks get slipped into place and the pinion depth checking tool is installed into the housing. Simply rock it back and forth on the target plate until we get a measurement and that is our measured pinion depth. Our pinion head measured 1.695 and our master housing dimension for the JK Dana 44 front axle is 4.312. The difference between those two numbers is 2.617. The depth that we measured with our pinion depth checking tool was 0.732. By using the long pointer on the pinion depth checking tool, according to the instructions, our calibrated depth is 3.375, and the difference between those two numbers is 2.643. All you do now is subtract those two numbers, and that is the thickness of your pinion shim. In our case, it's 0 0.026. Simply measure some shims with the vernier caliber, and we'll drop those shims onto the pinion and drop our setup bearing over top of them. I like to also install the secondary pinion bearing as well as the yoke just to hold the pinion in place. And I put a spacer on the pinion to ensure that the locking threads of the lock nut don't damage the pinion during this installation and removal. I use an old race as a spacer and set the locker up in the press to press on the side bearings. Before installing any rain gear, I like to go over the back side of it with a flat file. That just ensures that there's no burrs or any issues and it will seat perfectly flat on the locker. Drop the ring gear onto the locker and use a couple bolts to align it. Once these bolts are in, I flip the locker over and I seat the ring gear onto the locker with a dead blow hammer and then pull it home with an impact gun, just tightening down the bolts in a crisscross pattern and finishing off all the way around. Then I remove all the bolts from the ring gear, clean them, dry them off and apply the thread locking compound that comes in the master install kit. Bolts can then be installed for good, and once again, tightened down and then torqued. Then the carrier is dropped into the housing. With the carrier back in the housing, it's now time to set backlash. Now, backlash is simply the gap between the two gears, the ring and the pin. You need a small amount of space there for oil to get in to lubricate the gears. The JK44 spec for backlash is between six and ten thousandths of an inch and it is adjusted by different thicknesses of shim packs on either side of the differential locker. How I set backlash in this axle is actually pretty simple. 
I will move the carrier back and forth inside the housing with my hands and no shims until I get what I consider to be an acceptable amount of backlash. I will then measure and add shims on the ring gear side of the locker and use a screwdriver to wedge onto the opposite side of the locker to take up the gap. At that point, I adjust the size of the shim pack until I have our ring gear backlash specification of six to ten thousandths of an inch. At that point, I measure the opposite side of the differential with the calipers, and that tells me how many shims I'm gonna need. I add five thousandths of an inch to the shims on this side of the locker to give me an acceptable amount of carrier bearing preload. Then we'll measure backlash using the dial indicator with the pointer resting on one of the teeth, and we'll measure backlash in three different locations on the ring gear just to ensure that we don't have any ring gear run out. Now we can check our gear tooth pattern, and that's as simple as painting on the marking compound after mixing it with a little bit of gear oil, and if the pattern is good, we know that our pinion depth is correct. Carefully work the copper line for the air locker manifold into position. Make sure to keep it away from any possible rotating parts, and all we're doing here is marking the location where we'll drill the housing for the bulkhead fitting. You also need to clearance the bearing cap to make sure that it does not contact the copper line when it's bolted down. I pry the differential up and then remove the one large master shim from the ring gear side of the axle. This relieves all the pressure from the differential inside the axle housing and the rest of the shims can just be removed by hand. I'll remove the yoke and the pinion by using an air hammer with a punch that's sitting inside the divot on the back of the pinion. I'll then remove the setup bearing, making sure no shims are stuck to the backside, and then we can install our actual pinion bearing. Once again, using a race as a spacer, and then I just press the bearing on in the press. Drill and tap the housing for the bulkhead fitting and screw it into place. You wanna make sure to clean out any possible shavings from inside the housing. Some compressed air and some brake clean. I'll clearance the bearing cap with a rotary tool and a carbide bit. From the factory, the JK44 front uses a crush sleeve. I always choose to ditch the crush sleeve and upgrade it to a solid spacer and shims. I start with 20 thousandths of an inch for the shims and the solid spacer. There's no real way to determine the amount of shims that you're gonna need underneath the solid spacer. All you're gonna do here is assemble and disassemble multiple times until you get the rotational load that you're after. I like to spray a little bit of WD-40 onto the bearings to make sure they're not running dry to ensure that I have a good reading. If it's too loose or too tight, this is when you simply have to take it all apart and change the shims. If it's too tight, you need more shims. If it's too loose, you need less shims. 
This is just gonna be trial and error until we get the correct shim pack in place and the correct rotational load measured with our inch pound torque wrench. Once our rotational load is correct, we can pull the yoke off. And I like to put a bead of RTV around the sealing surface for the seal as well. And then install the pinion seal. Put a little bit of high temperature wheel bearing grease on the surface of the pinion yoke. I also put a little bit of thread locker on the pinion before installing the pinion nut, even though it is a locker. I also put bearing grease on the inner axle seals so they don't start dry. Then install the O-rings into the air locker manifold and lubricate them with high temperature grease as well. The entire assembly is then dropped into the axle and the shims are reinstalled. The large shim will need to be driven into place. This is where that shim driver comes in incredibly handy. Double check the clearance for your air locker copper line and torque the bearing caps down. We'll then carefully route our copper airline. This is the final routing, so we're gonna make sure that it's nowhere near the differential or the ring gear, so it won't contact them while it's spinning. Then we'll trim it to length and slide it through the bulkhead fitting, drop on the O-ring, and install the push lock connector. And that's it. The ring and pinion installation are complete and the air locker is fully installed. I hope you've enjoyed this step-by-step -step video explaining how to properly install a ring and pinion and locker inside the JK Dana 44 front axle. If there's a specific axle that you would like to see me build, go ahead and leave it in the comments section below. And I will leave a complete list of all the parts and tools that I used for this rebuild in the description. If you wanna see the actual vehicle that this axle is going under, well, head on over to Amazon Prime and you can catch my series there, Big Tire Garage. Give it a watch and give it a five-star rating. You'll get to see me build some pretty cool rigs. Until then, thanks for hanging out in the Big Tire Garage.